So here's problem number 20 from the 2012 AP Calc multiple choice set. Non-calculator question gives us f of x, says g is the inverse of f, tells us that f of 0 is 1, and then it asks us for the value of g prime of 1. So this is goofy because they don't tell us what g is. They do tell us that g is the inverse of f, and then they ask us to find the inverse's derivative value at 1. So there's a formula that you, you might recognize. It's actually written right here. Uh, it's a pretty easy formula to derive. So I'm just going to kind of talk about the derivation of it really quickly so that we hopefully understand where it comes from. On the AP exam, if, if you knew this formula, if you had it memorized, you could just apply it and be done with it. But just quickly talk about where it comes from. So g is the inverse of f. When you put a function in its inverse into one another. So when you compose a function in its inverse, they undo each other, right? Natural log of e to the x, square root of x squared. Those functions undo each other, out comes the input x. Now if you take the derivative of this side of this equation and this side of this equation, what you end up needing on the left is you end up needing a chain rule. So I do the derivative of the outside function, I leave the inner function inside, I finish my chain rule by multiplying by the derivative of the inner function, and then on the other side, the derivative with respect to x is just one. Now if you look at this line right here, what you really want to know within this problem is what is the inverse's derivative. Well that's g prime of x. So if I solve this equation that we just developed for g prime of x, I just take the one and I divide by f prime of g of x. This is the formula that we're going to use to find the value of the inverse's derivative. So when I try to apply that formula, I end up with one over f prime of g of 1, since that's the x value I would like to know the inverse's derivative at. So now the question becomes, well, what is g of 1? You don't know what g of x is. You do know that g and f are inverses of each other. So when you go from a function to its inverse, what happens with the roles of x and y is they reverse with each other. So the input becomes the output, and the output becomes the input. And what that means is that g of 1 is going to have to equal my bad version of a 0. What we then realize is that 0 can replace g of 1, and the calculation we ultimately end up needing to do is 1 divided by f prime of 0. Well, they do give us f of x. Using a chain rule to find f prime of x, you're going to end up with this. Evaluating that derivative at 0 is going to end up giving you an answer of 6. Putting that in to that denominator is going to end up with a final result of 1 sixth.